Hey friends, today I want to walk you through how to use my slab templates to make the minimal vase project. These templates are available on my website, I will have a link down below, and can be printed right from your home printer. For this demo, I am printing at 100% scale, but these projects work at any scale, so you can size up or down your templates in your printer settings to make your finished piece larger or smaller. The templates come with a set of instructions and are a good project for those just getting started with slab building. The first thing you need to do is cut out the template pieces. We are using templates C and E for this project. These templates are actually part of a larger kit, so that's why the names might seem a bit random. Next, you need to roll out your slab of clay. I'm using thickness gauges that are a half centimeter thick so that my slab will be an even half centimeter. My best advice for making good slabs is don't roll out too much clay at once. You want to slowly flatten out your slab, turning and flipping it as you go to stretch the clay evenly. If you press too hard on one section, you could create a weak point there that could eventually turn into a crack. Another thing that will help is to compress the slab with a rib. Any rib will work here, but I like to use this blue mud tools rib. By the way, if you're curious about any of my tools, I will have a list of my favorite clay tools linked in the description. Next, you just lay down your templates and cut them out. You will need two pieces from the C template and one from the E template. Now, before I start, my trick is to dry my template pieces out just a little bit. So I put them in front of the fan for about five minutes. This will stop your pieces from being very floppy as you work and result in a cleaner look. Now, this part is totally optional, but I do think it's worth the effort. Okay, so first you want to start assembling the body of the vase. That will be made up of the two larger pieces, template C. First, you want to cut the flat edges at a 45 degree angle. These will be the edges that we attach together, and by beveling them, we can create an overlay at the connection without adding any extra thickness. You want to use this method if you want your connection points to be invisible. Next, you want to score and add a bit of water to the connection points before attaching them together. If you skip the step where you put your pieces in front of a fan to dry out, then you should also skip the step of adding water here, as your clay will be wet enough and adding water risks making your pieces sloppy and difficult to work with. Blend the seam until you're happy with it, and don't forget the inside. It will take some practice making your seams look invisible. I don't bother making it look perfect because I actually think it looks nice when it's got that handmade look. Once you've assembled one part of the body, set it aside while you work on the second. Now that that's assembled, it's time to attach the two body pieces together. Once again, you should slip and score the parts you want to attach. Blend the seams, but don't worry about making it perfect just yet. It's always best to do final touch-ups after the whole piece is assembled. Okay, now it's time to add the bottom of the base. This will be the last piece, template E. You'll notice that template E is bigger than it needs to be. This is actually intentional because you want to attach the piece first before cutting the bottom to size. So you want to use a needle tool to mark where to score and score both sides before attaching them together. Once the piece is well attached, then I will use my needle tool to cut the bottom to size and blend the seams. Attaching your bottoms this way, meaning attaching first and then trimming to size, is the best way to get clean, straight bottoms. Especially on a piece that is angular like this one, I really think it's the best way to go. But all of the templates in my kit work this way because I also think it's easier than the other way around. Spend a little time at the end tidying up your work. I like to use a finger or sometimes a paintbrush if I need to get into tight cracks. Then your pot is ready to dry out. With builds like this, I prefer to slow dry the pot for 24 hours under some cloth or plastic before I let them dry out completely. This gives the seams a little more time to fuse and will help with preventing cracks. Since these pots are so narrow, I'm leaving them on their side to dry out for about a week.
I hope that this tutorial was helpful for you. If you want to check out the templates, I'll have them linked down in the description. I'll also include a few extra links like the link to my online glazing class if you're interested in learning all about glazing, as well as the links to my tools. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me in the comments below or DM me on Instagram. I love to hear from you. That's it for me today. I hope that you have a lovely and creative day. Bye friends.